Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm doing my latest installment in Todd and Dane's Indie Read Along. If you haven't heard that jingle in a while, because I forgot about this series. Um, this is basically me and Todd, we read indie books, so we post video reviews of them. I have two books here from Fly on the Wall Poetry Press, sent to me by Isabel Kenyon, who is the editor, so thank you Isabel. Uh, she sent me some other goodies as well. In fact, follow Wickham Arts Centre on Instagram, it's at Wickham Arts, because hopefully we're going to give away the books and a few goodies and a couple of art centre badges as well to our followers there. Um, but yeah, this is The Pretty Boys of Gangster Town by Martin Gray. This is a poetry collection and I have some short stories to talk about in a minute. Um, I've made more flags in this one because basically um, there are just lots of poems in this I, I want to read out loud. Um, also, you can check out Martin Gray himself um, reading the poem Fish, Chips, Bread and Butter and a Cigarette, which is one of my favourites from this. Um, but I didn't, I've not tabbed it to read it out because I figure you can just go and watch him. So I'll link to that below. Uh, it's dedicated for the friends and family who didn't make it this far. The world is a poorer place without you, which I think is very beautiful. And I'm going to just read out a bunch of the poems that I enjoyed from this and then give you a rating at the end. So this is Bones. Ding. The remnants of her yellowed hair were too weak to hide her sinkhole cheeks from the breeze of our approaching night bus. Her twenty going on cold turkey bones rising and falling with a moving mouth silenced by the idling of the engine. Her worn too often yellow tracksuit is almost two dimensional on her stick limbs and twig fingers fumble change against the hissing open door, the suburban 1am sky. The suburban 1am sky. Eyes falling pair by pair as they see her through the window, into phones with and without battery, writing real and fake messages of don't talk to me. Possessions repositioned for maximum don't sit here, please. Her jagged urgency bouncing off the stop bells in our shrinking comfort zones. Ding! Four stops, hitting her bones in waves as she stumbles at the empty priority seating right in front of me, her moving mouth silenced by the idling of our conscience. Does anyone have change for the bus? I really need to get home. Held hushed by her helplessness and the fear on her breath, my heart in sync with the engine vibration, my hands unprepared for this situation. Please. Someone finally fumbles and I fumble too, finding a pound and a petty, telling her sorry it's all I have on me. Not sorry for the bones and the pity blue veins overpowering her punctured skin, or that it took two pleas for someone to break from a phone with or without battery, writing real and fake messages of don't talk to me. Her moving mouth silenced by the scorn of the delayed, acceleration shaking terror from her almost tears as she rests, her stretched and sagging forearms from the back of the seat in front of me. When the pothole swings us in unison, I see the bruising in her malnutrition. Ding! and every pitfall of our filled up bellies on her bared yellow teeth. But my shrunken comfort zone doesn't let me ask her if she'll be okay. Three stops. I need to pay you back, I need to. Ding! She fires at me, suddenly my attempts at kindness bouncing off the half unzipped caves where her neck should be. Ding! And every time I tell her she doesn't, she fumbles a crumpled 10 or 20 from a pocket at the now hissing open door her other benefactor quietly departs from. Almost one for all the spinal bones pushing through her top. Ding! as she saves them from the half-crushed cans on the floor. Eyes in phones, with and without battery, see her shove them all right at me. Ding! See me close my hands and cover my pockets as if they've seen this exact scene time and time and time again. Ding! Two stops. I want to stop her, to calm her motion blur, but I can't move anything in case I accidentally hit her. Ding! Please, I say, keep your money. I want you to get home safely. I want to get home safely and it calms her just enough, just slightly, but my shrunken comfort zone still doesn't let me ask her if she'll be okay, or if she can eat those bones away, or if home is even a safe place to stay. Ding! Because I don't know what I would do if she told me. Ding! Me this time, telling myself that she'll be fine because my shrunken comfort zone wants this to stop when the bus does. Ding! As she pulls her bones up by the stop bell. Ding! As if she's getting off too. Ding! but I don't know how to be alone with her in the street lit stillness we've been cutting through. Ding. Please, she says. Ding. Can I have a hug? I see the worst of myself when I assume the worst in her, but I try to wrap my shrunken comfort zone around her bones, tightly enough to mean something, gently enough to protect me from her pain and protect her for a moment from the cracks we let her fall through, but my shrunken comfort zone still doesn't let me ask her if she'll be okay, as I tell her again to get home safely and head alone to the dark breeze outside the hissing open door. My hair too meek to hide my hapless cheeks from the breeze of her departing night bus. Her worn too often yellow tracksuit almost too late for her stick limbs. Her twenty going on frail bones falling and falling with a moving mouth, silenced by downward pairs of eyes. In phones with and without battery, writing real and fake messages of don't talk to me. 
I like this one because this one take this one has a sense of place. Uh, it takes me at least personally back to Berlin. So this is it rained a lot in Berlin that day. With a never-ending burble of a kettle a minute from boiling, your delayed arrival stranding you eight stops from home in the U9 flood near Tiergarten. It rained a lot in Berlin that day. A one in sixty year soaking, keeping the beer drinkers from benches by the spashies. No street musicians to serenade the sodden Schoenhauser swarms, leaving fewer empty bottles by the bins. It rained a lot in Berlin that day. Countless droplets bounced off the tags and the ample mention leading to the side streets where they rarely seemed to cut the foot high grass while we shared a little laugh or two about the surfboard in the Airbnb you said we wouldn't need again. It rained a lot in Berlin that day. A rain of puddles and shoes with holes in, making it slippy in Einstein Cafe. A vodka bottle with a glass or two waiting on your kitchen table. A secret thank you for letting us crash there while you'd been away. It rained a lot in Berlin that day. Where for once the Ubers were fuller than the U-Barns, but we were more intent on you getting safely home than working out another day to cook for you like we'd promised you before sharing a Berliner or two on your balcony. It rained a lot in Berlin that day. But we were drenched in afterglow from the Vilcom on you show us every single time we go. I miss Berlin. Ah. All right, here we have focus. I must get this done, focus. I'll make a nice cup of tea first, then I'll focus. Well, you can't have a brew without a biscuit, can you? I think the shop's got custard creams on special. The ones with the proper structural integrity where it's possible to munch the four corners into a relatively symmetrical diamond. A little walk might fix my knee pain anyway. Why do these expand like that when you bend them? Focus. It's like the inner bit absorbs the whole of the kneecap. I don't like my kneecaps. Does anyone like their kneecaps? I can't believe my knee gave way at those South Korean prayer stones that was something to do with stopping a small dragon from getting a white ball if you stack them seven or eight high, otherwise the dragon would get the ball and that was bad. Something like that. I think my photo of the tourist explanation is on the encrypted external hard drive I can't remember the password for. How do you decrypt a hard drive? Why did I even encrypt it? What else is on it? Focus. I bet my housemate forgot to wash up again. He doesn't even soak his pots, he just leaves them until his formerly al dente, now puddle pasta remains are harder than a cyborg Jason Statham in the third act of a movie, and I've got nothing to cook with. Does he think I'm his cleaner or something? And he's only got those rubbish rich tea rip-offs that spontaneously combust when they get within 10 feet of a cup of 30 second brewed Thai food. Why even buy a biscuit you can't dunk? Champion dunkers custard creams. I should get in touch with a Korean woman I met in Seoul. We had a great time at that tea room where you had to leave your shoes outside. I think we're still Facebook friends, but she's not liked or commented. But she's not liked or commented on anything since we met. Unless it's culturally important for me to go first. A bit like how everyone asked me how old I was so they knew how to address me. But then I probably shouldn't have kissed her. Focus. When we were smashed on Soju, she must have felt like she was trapped in a malfunctioning car wash, but also didn't back out of it. Although she was leaning against the wall. Focus. She looked amazing in that purple dress. Focus. Don't check that text. Who sends a text these days? It's probably a few more grand in PPI or whatever compensation from a loan I never had for some vital approaching deadline I thought had already passed. Maybe I could claim it all anyway. I might end up as the 7,209th richest person in Britain and lose the financial need to get this done. She could steal military secrets with legs like that. Maybe she is a spy, like one of those Russian spies except Korean. I'd be rubbish at keeping secrets from a Russian spy. Maybe one of my friends is a spy and she's tracking them through me. Maybe she wants my hard drive. How do you find out if someone's a spy? She might be up for it though. We could sell stolen secrets for a small fortune and scarper to a country with a non-extradition treaty. Brazil never used to have one. Or Ecuador. I think that's where Edward Snowden was headed before he got asylum in Russia. Focus. I sort of speak Spanish. That'd be fine. We could open a cafe, call it Cafe de Kimchi or something. We could sell those massive custard creams. Focus. Says they're all in my local if I change my mind. I can't sit beer in the sun with my mates. I must get this done. Maybe one soft drink. It's only a minute past the shop. A walk would be good for my knee anyway, and I do need some custard creams. If you were. I wanted to tell you, I thought you'd like to know. If you were a Monday morning, you'd sing a song so strong I'd skive off work and watch bad movies with you all day long. If you were a soft furnishing, you would be a blanket for every time you smother me, I know I'd be all warm and comfy. If you were a pencil grading, you'd be about 4B for it's all so very softly that you make your mark on me. If you were a French audio guide, I wouldn't understand, but I'd listen to your melody and know that life was grand. And if you were a famous landmark, you'd be the Eiffel Tower, because I really, really like it. I hope you don't mind me telling you, I thought you'd like to know. 
If you were a beer, you'd be a limited edition, multi-award winning Trappist beer, where they, only brew, where they only brew a few each year, so every sip is super special. If you were an electronic device, you'd be a dictaphone, because I'd be one if I didn't phone you and I can't be by your side. If you were a metal detector, you'd never need to start, for you've already found the keys to my softer side. If you were an invention, you'd be a suitcase wheel, because you always lighten my mind no matter how weighed down you feel. And if you were a non-fiction book from the 1980s, you'd be the Usborne Spotter's Guide to Dinosaurs, for as long as you and I will live, I know you'll give me more and more. I hope you like me telling you, I thought you'd like to know. If you were something that fell in the ocean, your buoyancy force would be less than 9.8 newtons, for it's when I sink right into you that I find my equilibrium. If you were an integral aspect of modern skyscraper design, you would be the lift, because you don't need the stairs from all those strangers. If you were a part of your sneeze, you'd be the little nose twitch you do before a chew, for you would bring me to my knees if you'd lost the things that made you you. If you were a condiment, you'd be a sugar sachet, for if I ate a lemon, you'd be there for my mouth. But most importantly of all, if you were a button on a telly remote, you'd be the big red one, you see, because no matter where you're taken to, you'll always stand by me. Anyway, this is Escape Velocity. Last one I'm going to read from this. I want to be an astronaut. I want us to break escape velocity and soar beyond our atmosphere, from Earth to outer space. I want us to fly until Madrid to Mount Fuji fit inside our warm embrace. I want to be an astronaut. I want us to sit on space debris, blowing our anxiety away, until we see unpolluted skies 24 hours a day. I want to be an astronaut. I want us to sail to Mars on solar winds, build castles in its dark red sand. I want us to jump in its 0.4 of Earth's gravity as high as we can. I want to be an astronaut. I want us to hitch a ride off Halley's Comet through the asteroid belt, slingshotting ourselves to Saturn, where I'd get some rings for your co-pilot fingers and we'd paint Stephen Hawking's soul on Titan's orange black canvas. I want to be an astronaut. I want us to lasso Voyager 2, swing ourselves through the Kuiper belt towards her, past the spot where her older sister cocked her head, to pale blue dot our insignificance, so we can tell her she hasn't been forgotten by giving her a hand through the helio sheath. I want us to push her on, so third law hard we launch ourselves back to our cleaned up Earth with just enough time to shout at Pluto, you'll be a planet again, and to break through Europa's ice, to wave at the undiscovered life in its unexplored liquid methane. I want to be an astronaut. Come with me. You're on the book again, aren't you? Excuse me. So anyway, as you can probably tell, I really enjoyed reading this collection. I'd probably give it a 5 out of 5. I mean, I tend to find that I'm more generous with poetry because I think that poetry tends to hit the extremes more often. So most fiction novels are pretty good. Um, whereas poetry is either really good or terrible, basically. This is one of the really good ones. Probably one of my top poetry collections of the year. So yeah, 5 out of 5. And then we have The Goddess of Macau, short stories by Graham Hall. Um, so I'm going to read you the blurb here because that will do a better job of summarising it than I can actually do. Um, I didn't take any tabs throughout this so I'm just going to share a few thoughts. This short story collection paints complex characters, myths and magic, all set in the former Portuguese colony of Macau. Macau was one of the first European settlements in Asia, founded in 1557. And over some 450 years, a unique Macanese culture developed, one that fused Europe and China to create an individual identity which, sadly, is in decline in the 21st century. Graham Hall is a talented storyteller and his work has been published in English, Portuguese and Chinese. And I think this is exactly what you would expect for a short story collection from a, a press that predominantly uh, deals in poetry. It's very poetic, very beautifully written, but also some really fascinating ideas in this, including like the idea of predestination and predetermination and what that knowledge does to a person, you know? So um, I don't have too much to say about it other than it was, because it's quite a short collection as well, about 80 pages. It packs quite a lot of ideas into it. And again, this predeterminism bit um, I was really interested in. It feels like literary fiction, but without the pretension. So uh, overall, I also enjoyed The Goddess of Macau and I gave this one a pretty solid four out of five. Some more great stuff from Fly on the Wall Press. I'm just consistently impressed with everything that they uh, send out. Anyway, I accidentally forgot to film a little outro to this video, so as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know if you're going to read any of these books as well. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.